Today we're going to look at the second half of lesson 13.3, which talks about coterminal angles, reference angles, and then using those with trig functions. So let's start with coterminal angles. A coterminal angle just means that they are angles in standard position, meaning that the initial side of that angle starts on the right side of the x-axis, the positive side of the x-axis. So angles in standard position with the same terminal side or coterminal angles. So for instance, we're going to look at, um, oops, I'm going to highlight this. So this would be my initial side right here, and this would be my terminal side right there. So if I went from this direction to this direction, well, let me end up highlighting that instead. So if I went, this will look better. Okay, so if I went from here to here, right, that is in a positive direction from here to here. That's a positive direction. This angle measure from here to here is positive 90 degrees. Why? If you will recall from yesterday's lesson that this is zero degrees and this is 90 degrees. But we can also go backwards. We can start here on the initial side and we can go all the way clockwise here and land in the same place. So I'm going to highlight that path, and for that path, doot, 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 I'm going to change colors, maybe, I don't know, I can't decide. Um, I don't have a lot of choices. Let's go with ugly orange. So it's not the prettiest orange ever. So if I go in that direction, now I'm going negatively, right? And so I'm going from zero to negative 90, to negative 180, to negative 270. So that's why this angle measure is negative 270. They've also given you the angle measure in radians. So negative 270 and negative 3 pi over 2 are the same thing. And over here, 90 degrees and pi over 2 are the same thing. Remember, in radians, you go from zero halfway around. This is pi. So if this is pi all the way over here, then halfway to pi would be here. That's pi over 2, half a pi. And if I go pi and then another half a pi, that's where this 3 halves pi comes from. So um, you're going to be asked to give two coterminal angles for each given angle. There is an infinite number of coterminal angles to this terminal side here, 90. These are just two of them. I could go from here and continue to go all the way around, right, which is now 360 and another 90. So whatever 360 is plus 90 degrees, that would count as another coterminal angle. I can just keep adding 360, 360, 360 forever and ever. And so I can keep coming up with an infinite number of positive coterminal angles to 90 degrees. I can also go negatively, and that's where this first angle came from, this negative 270. But what if I went all the way around one more time, another negative 360, another negative 360, another negative 360 infinitely? So what I want you to do, though, for each of these problems that you're given, you're going to um, add. So if you're in degrees, so let's say we go to 65 degrees. So 65 degrees would be right about, I don't know, here, give or take. So if we want a positive um, coterminal angle to 65 degrees, we will continue and go one full revolution around the circle until we reach back here again. That will give us a positive value. So what I would like you to do is add one full revolution to your positive angle measure, and that'll give you one positive coterminal angle. And then you are going to take this uh, 65 degrees, which would be right here, and you're going to go in the opposite direction of full revolution, which is a negative value, um, and see if that gives you negative angles. Sometimes when we subtract a full revolution, if it's a really big angle like this one, you might have to subtract twice. You may not, but I mean, if we had a 900 degree angle, 
you're going to have to subtract 360 um, a couple of times until you get a negative value. So let's start over here with 65 degrees and we're going to add to it one full revolution, which is 360 degrees. They should um, end in the same position. So if you add those together, you end up with 425 degrees. So there is a positive coterminal angle to 65. And then we're gonna take that 65 degrees, but instead of adding the 360, one full revolution, we're going to subtract a full revolution. And if you throw that in your calculator, we get negative 295 degrees. So that is our negative coterminal angle. So we have one positive and one negative. If subtracting that 360 still gave us a positive value, we would have to subtract 360 again and again and again until you get a negative value. Same thing would occur if we had started with a negative um, degree measure. You would have to add 360 until you get a positive degree measure. So sometimes you have to add or subtract revolutions until you get what you need. So then let's take 540. I want you to try that one on your own. Um, add a full revolution and subtract a full revolution and see if you get your positive and your negative um, coterminal angles. So pause the video. All right, so 540, we're gonna add 360 degrees. And when we do that, we get one, let's see. We're gonna get zero. I'm also gonna show you a different way that you could have done this one as well. So zero, zero, 900 degrees. So that's one way that you could have gotten a positive coterminal angle. Here's an interesting way to think about it. You could have taken 540 degrees and to get your positive coterminal angle, you could have subtracted 360 because it's bigger than 360. So you could have subtracted 360 and still have gotten a positive coterminal angle. So another um, option, if you subtract those, would be 180 degrees. So 180 degrees, 900 degrees, and 540 degrees, they all start at the initial side of zero and they go and end at the same place. So they're different angle measures, but they have the same terminal side, which is why they're called coterminal. All right, so then less we need, or last we need a negative angle measure. So 540 degrees, and we're gonna, con oh, I take that back. I don't wanna subtract from 540. Um, where is my eraser? Da -da 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 -da. There we go. I want to actually subtract from the 180. So since I already took 540 and subtracted 360 and I got a positive, now I want to continue with the 180. So the 180 that we just got. So this is an unusual situation. And then I'm going to subtract another revolution. And this time it should give me a negative value. And sure enough, it does we get a negative 180 degrees. All right, so then let's look at radian measure. So here you've been given the angle in radian measure, and I know it's in radian measure because it has pi in it. So instead of adding 360 and subtracting 360, you could add two pi, which is a full revolution, and subtract two pi. The problem with doing that is you have to deal with fractions um, and getting like denominators, which is fine because you have your calculator. So if we add two pi, I'm gonna put that over one, then what you're gonna do is go into your calculator and you are going to use parentheses. And so actually maybe I'll write this out and so you'll use parentheses 13 divided by 18, and I would do enter, and then plus 
2. And of course, you still have pi here, but that pi, this pi is not going to go on the calculator. You're just going to put in the calculator 13 divided by 18, enter, and then plus 2, enter. It's going to give you a decimal, um, but then you're going to hit math, enter, enter, and it's going to give you this beautiful fraction of 49 pi, well, not the pi, but 49. You're going to add the pi back in, and then it's over 18. So that is adding a full revolution of radians to get a positive value. Then we're going to take 13 pi over 18. And this time we are going to subtract a full revolution of radians, which is 2 pi. And I'm going to put that over 1. And again, in your calculator, you're going to do 13 divided by 18, enter. And then minus 2, enter. And then it's going to give you... Of course, let me get a pretty color up here, um, a lovely fraction. And this time it should be negative. If it's not negative, then you subtract another full revolution until it is. But this one does turn out negative. It's negative 23. I'm going to put it over here. Negative 23 pi over 18. So that is your negative coterminal angle. All right, so I want you to practice that with number 13. So pause the video, add 2 pi to get one full revolution, and subtract 2 pi um, or more if you need to to get a full revolution. So pause the video and then restart it. All right, so we are going to add 2 pi. And in your calculator, you should have done 14 divided by 9, enter, and then plus 2, enter. And you should end up with the positive fraction of 32 pi divided by 9. Then for your negative coterminal angle, 14 pi over 9 minus 2 pi over 1. And again, putting that into your calculator, you get, and you only need one revolution, one negative revolution, and you do get a negative coterminal angle of negative 4 pi over 9. All right, so then we're going to start and look at something called a reference angle. So this is what a reference angle is. It always comes from the x-axis. So for an angle in standard form, the reference angle is the positive acute angle formed by the terminal side and the x-axis. So it's always, here's your terminal side on this particular one, and then here's the x-axis. So you never go to the y-axis, you always go to the x-axis. So terminal side down to the x-axis, or you might be over here, terminal side, and you go up to the x-axis. So we are going to sketch and find the reference angles for each of these angles. And this one happens to be in radians. So I'm going to go through each of these with you separately. So you'll start with your, so on this particular one, um, this is your, uh, this is your initial side. And then this is your terminal side. And then the angle is right there. But we use this as a reference angle oftentimes to help us with these angles or other types of problems. So you need to try to find your reference angles because when we do trig, the reference angles are gonna become important. So let's start with 225. So for 225, I'm gonna make this bigger so I can write on it. All right, so for 225, I'm going to start to number this as zero degrees, and then this is 90 degrees, and this is 180 degrees, and this is 270 degrees. So I've now gone past 225. So halfway in between, halfway in between one, well, this is 90 degrees from here to here, so it would be 45. So um, 180 plus 45 is actually 
225, it should be. So we are going to start here with our terminal side. Whoops, use a highlighter. So we're going to start here with our terminal side, right? And then we are going to put our terminal side right about here. Right about here. So this is our angle from here to here. And that angle is going to be 225 degrees because it's somewhere in between 180 degrees and 270 degrees. So what I want to do is I want to determine, I always take the terminal side and go to the x-axis. So I'm going to go up to here and we actually create this right triangle, which I'm going to go ahead and create the right triangle now. I'm going to start you on that early. And then we like to use theta prime to represent that reference angle. So theta prime, theta prime looks like that. It is equal to, um, we're going to take, because this is 225, this represents 225 here. So I'm going to take that 225 and subtract 180 from it to see what this difference is. So I'm going to take our 225, because that's our angle. Because you typically are going to add or subtract. You're either going to add or subtract 180 um, or 360 sometimes. It just depends um, on your angle. So we're going to just mess with a couple of them here. So we're going to take 225 and we're going to subtract the 180 because that's your x-axis. And if you do that on your calculator, theta prime is indeed 45 degrees. So that should be one single, I don't know why it looks like it's two lines. So theta prime, that's our reference angle, is 45 degrees. Okay? So then let's work on number 15. So number 15 is negative. So let's start labeling our axes negatively. So this is zero degrees. And we're gonna go clockwise. So this is negative 90 degrees. And then keep going, negative 180, negative 270. And this is back to negative 360, okay? So somewhere in between here and here, between negative 270 and negative 360 is the angle that we're looking for. And I typically just draw, you know, my terminal side in between on the quadrant where I know it belongs. So our initial side is right here. And then we went from here, and you have to draw this, from here all the way to here, okay? That represents your negative 310 degrees. So you need to draw that in there. Then I'm going to make a right triangle here. And then this is theta prime, the reference angle. So to figure out the reference angle, I need to know how far this is from here. Well, this is 300, negative 310 degrees. So I need to actually take this value here, which is the x-axis, and I need to subtract the negative 310 degrees, right? So to get theta prime, we are going to take our negative 360 degrees and we are going to subtract the negative 310 degrees. And what happens is when you subtract a negative, you're going to add the opposite. And so it's really negative 360 degrees um, plus 310. Now the problem with that is it's going to give us a negative value and reference angles are always positive. So I want you to always think in terms that this should be an absolute value. So we want the positive value that this would be from here to here. So that's going to give us what? Oh, do, 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 50 degrees? Yep. So theta prime is equal to 50 degrees. That's our reference angle. All right. This one is in radians. So 
oftentimes what I will do is convert it two degrees. So I'm gonna convert it off here to the side. So I'm gonna take two pi over three. And if I wanna convert it, and I wanna get rid of the pi and have degrees, my pi in my conversion for radians to degrees, my pi goes diagonally, so in the denominator, and the 180 degrees goes in the numerator. So of course the pi's are gonna cancel. And then two times 180 is 360 degrees divided by three, which is 120 degrees. So two pi over three is exactly equal to 120 degrees. So if this is zero degrees and this is 90 degrees and this is 180 degrees, I know that 120 degrees is somewhere between 90 and 180. So I'm just gonna draw my terminal side here. Remember my initial side was here and we had to go from initial to terminal. So that right there represents the two pi over three, which is our 120 degrees. But then I'm gonna draw this right triangle here and theta prime is going to be my reference angle. So to get theta prime, I'm still gonna work in degrees, but my final, my final reference Angle has to be in radians because we started in radians, but I like to work in degrees. So for our reference angle, so theta prime, we are going to take 180 degrees, which is our X axis value, right? So right here, I'm gonna subtract away from that this 120 degrees to see what's left over to get us to the 180. So that leaves us with theta prime is 60 degrees. So then we have to convert that 60 degrees back to radians for our final answer. All right, so then I am gonna multiply this by the reverse um, conversion. So here we did 180 degrees over pi, but now I'm converting degrees back to radians, so I want my degrees to be diagonal so the 180 degrees is gonna go here in the denominator and the pi will go in the numerator, and this is over one. And so then we have 60 pi over 180. Remember the degrees canceled. And then you'll reduce that in your calculator and you end up with theta prime equaling pi over three because you get the fraction one third. All right, so that is an important step in your unit circle. So now let's talk about trig functions and, there we go. All right, so now we're gonna let theta be an angle in standard form, and it's gonna go to this point. So we go from here to here, and then here's the radius of this right triangle that I started to draw for you. And this is your reference angle here. So if this is theta, this is gonna be theta prime. If I can squeeze that in there, right? So theta is your actual angle measure, theta prime is your reference angle. And this is whatever the distance is for your radius, there's some point here that has an X and Y value. So that's gonna be a point, some point on that terminal side the distance from P to the origin, so from P here to the origin, is gonna represent R, which is the hypotenuse of that triangle. So if it's a hypotenuse of the triangle, we are going to use Pythagoras' theorem, which states that your legs, which this is the Y direction from the origin, this is the X direction, and this is the Y direction, so this leg is the X value, this leg is the Y value. Even if these are negative, like this X value here would be negative and this Y value would be positive, when you square them in Pythagoras Theorem, you're gonna always have a positive radius, no matter what. So remember, we're gonna use X squared because that's one of our legs. We'll add Y squared to it, that's our other leg, 
and it's going to equal the radius, which is our hypotenuse squared. So that's Pythagoras' theorem applied to the unit circle. So instead of a squared plus b squared equals c squared, we have x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So technically, in terms of this reference angle, and I'm going to make this a little bigger here for a minute. Um, according to this reference angle, and that's our angle of reference, y is the side opposite. So this is side opposite. And then x right here is the side adjacent. And of course our r is our hypotenuse. So hypotenuse is always a hypotenuse. So remember, I'm gonna go back to making this smaller and then make it straight, okay. So then I'm going to write our ratios. And we'll do our inverse um, or our reciprocal functions next. But remember we have some old hippie caught another hippie dripping on acid, right? Sokotoa. And so according to the picture at the left that we just drew, um, some old, old is y, and hippie is r. For cosine, adjacent is x, and hypotenuse, or hippie, is r. And then for tangent, opposite is y, and adjacent is x. And then for our inverse functions, remember that cosecant is the um, reciprocal function, sorry, cosecant is a reciprocal function of sine, secant is the reciprocal function of cosine, and cotangent is a reciprocal function of tangent. So all we have to do is take the reciprocals of each of these, and so you would have r over y for cosecant, r over x for secant, and x over y for cotangent. All right, so then in number 17, they are gonna give you an ordered pair. So this is an x, y value. You're gonna plot that ordered pair over here in the coordinate grid, and it is gonna be a point on the terminal side in standard form. We're gonna find the exact values for these trig functions using that exact point. So let's take, um, our x-axis, and we're gonna go out to five. So one, two, three, four, five. So here's five. And then down two, one, two. So here's our negative two. So our initial side, of course, is here, right? And then our point, five, negative two, ends up being right about here. Oops, I did not want the highlighter. And I didn't want blue either. Third time's a charm. Okay, so then that point is five negative two, right? And then I'm gonna draw the terminal side, which is right here. So that's our terminal side, this point being on that terminal side. So our actual angle, remember, goes from the initial side over here to the terminal side. So that's your actual theta. And then inside here, right here, is theta prime. And we would create this little right triangle. So I'm going to draw that right triangle bigger down here so we can see it. All right, so this is theta prime. It was hard for me to see, draw that in there. So theta prime, so if this direction from here to here is five, then that means that this direction from here to here is five, because this is our origin right there. And then from here, if that's five, when we went down two, this has a value here of two. I'm not gonna put a negative two because it really doesn't matter that it's negative. And then this, of course, is our radius, which is r we need to find that value. So over here, I'm gonna do Pythagoras' theorem, which is five squared plus three 
plus the 2 squared is equal to r squared. So we have 25 plus 4 equals r squared. And then r squared is equal to 29. And then I'm going to take the square root of both sides to solve for r. And we're going to leave r in its um, radical form because that's its exact value. So r becomes the square root of 29. So I'm going to erase this, maybe. Alrighty. And then, I guess I didn't. I'm not sure what I erased, but it didn't erase what I wanted it to. That's okay. So we'll just replace r with the square root of 29. Okay, so then if theta prime is our angle of reference, right, then we have to find our side opposite. So side opposite is the 2. And then our side adjacent is the 5. And then, of course, this is our hypotenuse. So I'm going to set up our ratios and some old hippie caught another hippie tripping on acid. So no different than we did in our previous two lessons to this, which is why it's skill building and ties into this. All right, so opposite is two. Your hypotenuse is the square root of 29. So of course you know we have to rationalize that. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by radical 29, that's actually a nine, shocking but true, over radical 29. So we end up with, um, I'm gonna make this just a little bigger, there we go. And so I get two radical 29, all over just 29. So that is our sign. Put a box around that. And then we'll do cosine. Right, so cosine. Maybe. Okay, so cosine. Um, adjacent is 5. Hypotenuse is that square root of 29 again. So, of course, we have to rationalize that. So, let's multiply top and bottom by the square root of 29 over the square root of 29. Which, of course, gives us 5 rad 29 all over just 29. And then tangent to be able to see that triangle. All right, so then tangent is opposite, which is two over the adjacent, which is five. And that one does not have to be rationalized, yippee skippy, and there we go. So then for our cosecant, our secant, and our cotangent, we just have to take the reciprocals of these answers. Now, I personally would rather take the reciprocal of this fraction versus this one, because if I take the reciprocal of this one, we're gonna have to rationalize again, and it's gonna get a little hairy, whereas this one, which is the one, the fraction before we originally rationalized it, if I take the reciprocal of this, that um, radical ends up in the numerator. So it'd be, it's much easier if I take the reciprocal of that original fraction. A lot less work. So I've got the square root of 29 over 2. Put a box around that. And then for the secant, same thing. I choose to take the reciprocal of this fraction, not this one. And so I get the square root of 29 over 5. We're going to be smart about it, right? 
And then finally for cotangent, um, just easy enough, five over two. And that's it. So you're gonna practice this skill. Make sure you have your notes with you as you're doing your homework. And good luck.